Um, good day to you guys. Welcome to another instalment of the Global Sport in Colour Sports Magazine show in association with The Voice newspaper. I'm here with Michael Facey on my left and Rodney Hines, sports editor of The Voice newspaper. Facey, uh, owner, proprietor, yeah. nothing wrong sports. Um, we're here this week to cover a few topics that you know we like covering, football mainly, a um, bit of boxing mm. and... A bit about Coach, which is an exhibition being held by British Athletics uh, for Black History Month. But first things first, of course, football. Mm. Rodney, Certainly. last weekend, um, it was a good weekend for North London, wasn't it? Yeah, Tottenham and uh, Arsenal scored a, a little nine goals between them. Conceded three against Liverpool and Everton, respectively. Um, yeah, well done, Tottenham. We were at that game mm. looking good against a very poor defensively anyway mm. Liverpool side mm. and um, Arsenal just warming up I think admittedly it was Everton but you still got to take the points they did go a goal behind so yeah looking good for North London at the moment and the big derby is on November the 18th so. did you think that you would deal with Everton as easy as you did I mean they didn't I mean we know now that no they, they didn't was, <laughs> they were I, suffering Koeman's I, I gone I thought it'd yeah. be a very challenging game right. when the first goal went in went in by Mr Rooney I thought hello could mm. be a bit of a challenge here. Mm. But, you know, Arsenal get charged with not showing bottle and mental strength sometimes. Um, Troy Deeney's comments come at, a, yeah, at the right you know, time Troy's, for you guys. Troy's, Troy's in touch. Troy's events. Troy. Troy's Troy. That was unconventional, though. Unconventional. Just telling the truth. I think though, he got he? a rap over the knuckles from his own manager. Did he? Yeah, for that. Right, okay. Yeah. Not the fact that he said it, maybe, but yeah. in the public domain. Right, right, you right. You know. Um, but I, listen. I, I, I was like, I, it's, it's funny that, because I was waiting for the backlash to come. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't know where it would come from yeah. um, because I've always find it interesting that we as journalists especially want footballers to be honest and open mm. and to talk the truth and then when they do it they get wrapped on the knuckles for speaking it in public yeah. it's like but it, admittedly it by their sense. own management as opposed to yeah. journalists no I thought yeah, that's, that's, that's a great very interesting bite, I, I there's, think there's an element of respect yeah. um, but you know yeah. I look forward though to uh, Watford coming to the oh Emirates. that's going to be a great game <laughs> Gonna be a great Gotta be a, get your elbows out. No, I think there's gonna be a lot of goals in that but one. You know what? I think I think with that Everton game, it was said that was the first time that the big three actually played Lacazette, Sanchez, and Ozil, mm. right. and that made a difference. So that's world class players right there in that squad. So. Well, they've got to be up for it, and I think that Ozil being up for it makes a big difference to me. Mm. You know, we talk, talk about this term up for it. I think it's a case of you've got to be up for it for more than one game to yeah. be a successful footballer. Yeah. You know, so let's see what you can do now at home to Swansea, where most team, most people think we'll get the points. But let's mm. see, let's yeah. see. Moving on, Mike, your team. Yeah. Um, the term up for it wasn't there. <laughs> no, uh, well, yeah, <laughs> talking about being up for it, your team were not up yeah. for it, and I think Jose Mourinho was quite honest in his assessment after the game mm. um, about the fact that he just didn't understand where that performance came from and the reasons why there was just no effort or a lack of effort in comparison to Huddersfield, who took the three points. Yeah, I mean, I think we spoke about this off-camera as we do, and, mm. you know, the, the, the thing goes, but, I mean, you have to be up for it mm. every single game, mm. every weekend. Effort is a minimum, Effort, right? Yeah, as a minimum, because all of the teams that were in that bottom three, as Rodney said earlier, off-camera, won. Mm. And they, they're fighting for survival. They're mm. fighting to stay in this premiership. So if you're not up for it, they can nick a point. We saw Watford beat Arsenal. We saw Crystal Palace turn over Chelsea, Chelsea. didn't we? So, you know, I don't know what that United is. That is why we love the Premier League. It's as mm. simple as that. And don't forget, I think teams like Huddersfield and the Palaces and the lower level clubs as such, mm. they've got a natural advantage that sometimes they'll have a week off. Mm. Yeah. You know, United have been and played out in Benfica. Mm. Um, there's been big games left, right and centre. Mm. Um, and when a, another team can have a week off, have a focus, but have a game plan. We still say that with all that money, all the talent being spent, they should be good enough the, to at least win the game. You know, the only interesting thing for me is that the Premier League is traditionally talked about as the big six. Mm. The other 14 are key to the big six mm. and we should never forget that. Mm. No, I agreed. And, and I think that that's exactly what happened in that game. They thought they'd roll up and just... Would walk walk right, the three yeah, points, yeah. and, you know and you, you've got to earn every point. And what's in interesting, league. we talked about Arsenal earlier on. If Arsenal had gone to Huddersfield and lost, not mm. everybody would have been totally surprised. Mm. But mm -hmm. this was a United team yeah. under a legendary manager mm -hmm. that normally gets his players up for it, and they were looking good. And you know what? <laughs> I looked at some of that game, and you know what? Sometimes you get fluky results. Mm. Huddersfield thoroughly deserved to win it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. Away from the goals, just their attitude. They were up for it. Mm. They were busy. So listen, love it, and um, 
there'll be other results like that throughout the course of the season. Yeah, yeah. No doubt, no doubt. Um, good, big respect to Huddersfield. But this weekend, looking forward, what are the big games? If I mean, uh, well, I, I know of one big game. Uh, there's one big game. <laughs> <laughs> it does involve um, Man United uh, yeah. again at Old Trafford. Mm. Manchester United versus Tottenham, the lunchtime kickoff, will set the template for the weekend. I agree. Yeah. Um, In a better way than I think the Man United had the lunchtime kickoff a couple of weeks ago, didn't it? It was, yeah, it was against Liverpool. It was, yeah, a that draw. was Liverpool. That's like you the know, board draw, wasn't it? It's like a lot and of yet, rivalry. And yet I say really. respectfully, it was yeah. United that bored people. Yeah. It wasn't Liverpool. Oh. Yeah. So. Mike, how do you see that one going on Sunday, on Saturday even? Well, listen, I'm hoping for the problem mm. of the Mourinho backlash from the team drawing with Liverpool and being told you're boring and then losing to Huddersfield. I'm hoping that they get that backlash, get their knuckles rattled and they come out and perform and potentially win the game 1-0. Win they're going to need to because they're coming up against a team that is hungry, yeah, especially away from home and a team that... Are quite comfortable playing on any anybody else's pitch. They don't care. They're uh, playing their game. Yeah, we, you know we, what I find so amazing is that United start the season were blowing people away. Mm. Lukaku was scoring every mm. game. Rashford was doing it. Martial was coming on as a sub mm. scoring. And now, for the want of a better term, there's a mini crisis potentially if you lose on Saturday, um, because I've seen Tottenham a few times now. I know you're quite right. Away form is superb. I don't see any reason why Tottenham can't go up there. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Mm -hmm. I can't see any reason why Tottenham don't go up there and take all three points. I mean, it just goes to show how influential Pogba was. Because now that he had that injury and he's gone, the team don't look like the same team. And is you, it, you is, say it, that, is Mike, it just Pogba? Uh, you say that, I but know, I think just... most of the success has been for United early, was without him anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, we looked at Matic fitting in quite comfortably. Mm -hmm. um, Fellaini was getting his opportunity. Um, oh, but I'm talking in the sense that because he was still in certain, in those mm. sites it allowed freedom for certain players to do what they mm. want mm. so if Matic goes forward no, yeah, you're probably right and that's what that's what looks different for me now do you know what I, I find and, and I don't really think there's a crisis at United I just think they just had a couple of results that like make people no I'm not going to look crisis up. but yeah. people like us will yeah. say it's a crisis no, no, of course. having lost at Huddersfield yeah. having think, lost to a title all, rival it's also bearing in mind what City are doing that's you know, what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? And everybody has to take that into account. Of course. Yeah. Because and that's the thing. They le if they're left to do you their own thing. You can't ignore it. You, you, could, have a you, could, you could have a scenario that if not before Christmas, just after Christmas, mm. the title could be done. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the way, you, the, if, the way they're going. But then they've done the that last year until they come Different proposition this year. No, they definitely look like... Guardiola's had his season to bob and weave. He's got players in now that he wants. And, you know, we watch them live or on TV and they're doing what the manager what wants. What if De Bruyne, who is the heart of, who looks like the heart of that team, the gets taken out of He's it. the heart of it. You see Where that, the but you see from? that, but then you, you have a David Silva who can pull strings, mm. you've got a Yaya Torre that when he got his chance last year, mm -hmm. having not started yeah, very yeah, well, yeah. came in was influential. And that might happen again. It could do. Because you can see that yeah. Pep, Pep knows yeah. how to... They're in good to, shape. Interesting, they're in yeah. good shape. How to pull a yeah. squad together. Yeah. So yeah, I mean... Um, yeah, the, what they're doing is, is definitely the reason why everybody needs to stay on their game. So it right. makes this weekend's fixture between Tottenham and United even Absolutely. more um, poignant. Rods, what mm. other games? I know West Ham uh, have got a tricky fixture. Yeah, to tricky fixture or not, we mm. don't know. Crystal Palace host West Ham. And that's another derby. Another Bear in derby. mind that they've... Ooh. Another, another derby. You did. Crystal Palace um, beat Chelsea a couple of weeks ago. Um, then lost lastminute.com to Newcastle. So mm. they'll be, they're back to where they were. Mm. West Ham, don't know. I mean, I saw West Ham live and direct against Brighton last mm. week at the London Stadium. That was a bit of a shock, they wasn't were it? Awful. Mm. Credit to Chrissy Hewton and, and Brighton, though, got them playing some mm. ball. Um, and as he said, Chris, um, West Ham were vulnerable and they knew that and they came there. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm probably going to go for West Ham to take three points. All right. Yeah, it seems mad, doesn't it? Mm. But well, not really. I mean, it's I think West Derby, isn't it? You never know. But I, I mean, they, they need it. And it'd be interesting to see if Billich can get them going. What about Southampton? I know they've got another. Southampton are away. Game. That's a game I'm coming on Sunday. Brighton versus Southampton. So right. it's a South Coast Derby. Mm. It's a good game. Um, be interesting. I think if Brighton get three points there, mm. I think they're comfortable in terms of we're in the Premier League mm. now. Mm. We've done 10 games. Mm. We can do this. Um, so yeah, Crystal Palace, uh, West Ham. I'm going to go for West Ham to win, and there's um, Brighton against Southampton. I'm going to go for Brighton to nick that one as well. well okay, those are the games Rodney Hines is looking forward to this weekend. Um, I second what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see, Mike. We'll yeah. see what happens. We'll, we'll be here next week to talk about it. You might notice that I'm repping my E10. 
Yeah. Leighton Orient. Yeah. I don't know who they got this weekend, but good luck. <laughs> <laughs> um, moving on to a different sport, mm. boxing. Big fight this weekend. Or is it a big fight? I don't know. Is it, I, I can't get up feeling this is a waste of time. And I'm talking about Anthony Joshua versus mm. the Takam. Gazer named Takam. Takam. Yeah. yeah do you know what? Have we seen our oldies? We, we have, but you know what you've got to do, as a, especially <laughs> in the heavyweight division, you've got to pay due care and attention. Yeah. And if Anthony Joshua, who was training for Pulev, obviously, um, does a little swerve in terms of mentality, it can go wrong. <laughs> and there's, it and there's, can go there's wrong. a lot of talk with um, Deontay Wilder floating around whilst this fight's happening. It could knock him off of his preparation for the fight. Take your eye off the ball a little bit. I've never seen him be anything but focused and ready for fight mm. for a fight. So I doubt that would happen. But, I mean, he's Takam. Is he getting his blood going? Is it? And that's, and another that's the thing, problem. Though. That's the problem. Yeah, that's another thing. Is he getting his blood going? Because with Pulev or a Wilder, etc., etc., you are fully yeah. focused, yeah. knowing what you're doing. Yeah. And it's just this—it's it's a little bit like trying to get to the M1 from London. Mm. Um, You—it doesn't move, does it? But you sometimes have to take a detour, and that detour can frustrate you sometimes mm. and cause you a little bit of grief. I'd expect Joshua to win. I'm yeah. just asking him to take due care and attention. Yeah. That's all. What happens um, 2018 for you in an ideal world with Joshua? What's, what's in a word, boys, like what, what, what happens for him? Who should he fight? I know Wilder's going to come out your mouth, but when? Should no, it be the I, first fight? I, I mean, what's happening? I reckon there? three fights next year. I guess um, two. Parker. Yeah. I mean, he's just got to go for yeah, unification. Go, 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 I think Parker, then do a, a voluntary yeah, mm -hmm. or mandatory, mm -hmm. whatever they want to call it, and then Deontay Wilder. But that voluntary mandatory could be anybody just to get you ready for that final fight against Wilder, depending how their next fights go as well, because mm. they might not have the belts. Mm -hmm. so, but that's, that's it for me. For me, there's one fight that everybody wants. Uh, it's in the balance, obviously, based more on Fury than Joshua. But that's the one that everybody wants to happen. Mm. Um, I don't know if I'm totally convinced by Wilder. He's got an awful lot to say for himself. Mm. But uh, I would love to see um, Tyson Fury against um, AJ. AJ. Yeah. Battle yeah. of Britain. Yeah, that, none. That'd be a great fight. Yeah, and if you had and challenge The two guys that beat Klitschko. Yeah. Two unbeaten Absolutely. Brits. Absolutely. And, and it seems. A, You're selling it now. Should yeah, there you go. Yeah. See, look, he's got From excited. That, that, that. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. If you could find I the know, Fury however difficult it may now be yeah. that beat Klitschko yeah. against a pumped up Joshua. Yeah. What a fight that would be. Well, it's funny. I saw Spencer Fear and, and um, Tyson Fury going back to back and forth on, on Twitter early last week. Um, and Spencer said the same thing. You know, the 2015 Tyson Fury. Yeah. That, but that's nearly three that years beats, ago yeah, now. That beats AJ, you yeah. know. Um, Do you know what would be another interesting matchup that. as well? Fury and Dylan White. Fury and Dylan White would be another interesting little scrap that, that could potentially take. Dylan would have to put himself in a position where he's got something that Tyson, yeah, that Tyson wants. wants. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because Tyson wouldn't take that fight. He's going to need a warm up fight before that big one. Yeah, but that's not a warm up, mate. That's not, I know, that's what I mean. He's going <laughs> to need Running into a brick it. wall. No, Dylan, Dylan's a big fight. Yeah, Dylan that's a hard scrap. He's got a fight coming up. He's, 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 he's fighting, fighting Hellenius, isn't he? Hellenius. Under the same bill, isn't he? Hellenius. Yeah, yeah. Oh, listen, Dylan, if you're watching, I'd be destroying. Yeah. Um, do what you got to do, mate, because I, I think you're, you're you're on the precipice of, there, man. of possibly getting that big fight mm. with Anthony, with Deontay. None of them want it. Well, I don't know. AJ, 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 well, AJ, yeah, AJ, yeah, have it. he's had it before. Um, so yeah, good luck to Dylan. Good luck to AJ this weekend. You know what? We spoke to Frank Bruno. Um, he had some positive things to say mm. about AJ, and you know, I think that the world um, should be aware of this. So just take a little look at this clip. He's doing a good job, he's on his game. He needs, you know what I mean, to learn one and two things, but take the consideration. He's only had 20 fights and he's knocked out every single person that's put in front of him and he's on point and he's on his game. And God bless him, and I hope he does very well. Big Frank, you know, he's a very yeah. serious guy. He does, he says, isn't he? He met some serious cups of tea. Yeah. Um, on his on his Black History Month travels, I got so much respect for that man. Got to definitely. You know and his means. book his book came out. Last yeah, week, let so. me be frank. Yeah. I, I just think that he got was born so that he could write that book. <laughs> let me be frank. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, let him be frank. Um, all the best, Frank. Looking forward to sitting down and speaking to you again in the future. Mm -hmm. Moving on from boxing to track and Black History Month because we've got to salute Black History Month. Mm -hmm. We're at Kick It Out, as you can possibly uh, probably see. Yeah. Um, big, big respect. Big, to kick yeah, it out. big big, big thanks to Kick It Out for hosting us and 
um, giving us the space. Coach. Yeah. British athletics don't traditionally do anything to mark Black History Month. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been immersed in the sport for years. I don't remember anything being done. Mm-hmm. So I want to I want to take my hat off first and foremost to Donna Fraser. What's her official capacity? Uh, Vice, Vice President. President. Vice President. We salute you. Yeah, we salute equality, and, and yeah, we're behaving yeah. ourselves. She's equality and diversity representative manager. She's dealing with that area. Right. She yeah. owns it. She and owns and, I, and, it, and it's a great, great concept she's brought to life. Um, Mike, you were there. Yeah. Um, talk about it. I mean, there were some great images shot of a, a good friend of yours in particular. Mr. Ernest. Mr. Yeah. Ernest, Ernest Simmons. He's yeah. He was the photographer. Ernest. I think it was brilliant. I think um, to celebrate the BAME coaches... In, in that capacity from British Athletics and with Donna putting it together. I think that's fantastic. And to use the images of a photographer that's been in and around the circuit mm. for that amount of time, capturing the emotions mm. of mm. These, these, the athletes that are doing their things and the coaches' emotions, I think you can't ask for nothing more. It's mm. celebrating. Well done to British yeah, Athletics. Yeah, definitely. Well done to Donna Fraser. No, most definitely. I mean, we know Donna. She's yeah, a perfect person to Proactive. be Proactive. Isn't she? Yeah. And no, it can only grow. British, well. Yeah, British Ath- Athletics have made a big and, and, and a wise choice with Donna. Yeah, I agree. Because knowing her as I do, as we all do, she's this is just the start of yeah. certain things. Oh, well, even her, you know, Jason, which is uh, Jason uh, Gardner. Gardner. Yeah. Um, I think they do a great job. So, yeah. Um, they can get their claws into and do what they've got to do from mm. grassroots all the way up now and mm. uh, see how they go. No, salute um, for those who are in charge of making that decision to appoint her. Um, keep her there as long as you can. She's very, very proactive. Um, I mean, the voice newspaper were media partners mm. for the coach exhibition mm. Mm. Um, and that really come as a result of Donna having the vision to partner up. And the context. There you go. The so, uh, yeah, good luck to her. Boys, any other business? I know there's a, a Formula One driver vying for his fourth title. Mm. We thought he was going to do it last week. It didn't quite happen. Can it happen this weekend? It is, it's going to happen. Yeah, I don't see any reason why not. Can't see, yeah. Another man we've got to salute. Yeah. Um, our back page reflects um, what he's doing at the moment. Right. In this particular example, it's with Usain yeah, Bolt. Good. But he's on point. Um, listen, consummate professional. Mm. Did what he did in the States last week. I mean, the guy's only lost one race since the summer break. At yeah. the start of the season was 20 plus points down. So Lewis Hamilton, that knighthood has got to come sometime soon, as far as I'm concerned. Well, I mean, that's what we'll be, talk- we'll be yeah. talking about until he gets it, right? Absolutely. So, um, um, so yeah, well done. It's coming in Mejijo this yeah, Sunday. Yeah, sure. definitely, 100%. Um, listen, that's that's another global sport in colour. Actually, before I wrap up, yeah. um, Blacklist, Football Blacklist. How's it going? Yeah, How's it going, Black- founder? Fo- football Blacklist is back uh, next month, um, and we'll talk about that, probably do a live podcast with uh, my uh, co uh Leon Mann, next week. Mm-hmm. Um, bigger and better than March. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to the Premier League. Shout out to the Premier League. 100%. For, for true. Um, it's going to be exciting. Um, yeah, it's going to be exciting. Yeah. Well. All right. So not too much said. Just look, watch, this, said. watch this space. space. Can we tell them when it's happening yet? Or we, we, next month. Next month. Yeah. Next oh, month. All right. Next month. Yeah. <laughs> We don't want no, no one has stragglers turning yeah, up. Right? That's right. Yeah, invite only. Invite only. Invite um, only. Well, that's Global Sport in Colour, sports magazine show in association with The Voice newspaper. Um, big thanks again to Mike yeah, Facey, Rodney Hines. Um, see you guys next week.